Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve this problem, long name, special array with x elements greater than or equal to x. And even though it's easy, it's a little misleading because this is quite an interesting problem. We're actually going to go over two approaches for this problem. One is going to be an n log n solution, and the other one is going to be a linear time solution. Both of them are actually pretty interesting in my opinion. So we're given an array of non-negative integers. The idea is that for an array like this one, 3, 5, this is considered a special array because there exists some number that we call x such that there are exactly x elements that are greater than or equal to x in the input array. Is that number one? No, it's not because there are two elements greater than or equal to one in the array. So there's like a mismatch, right? Is the number two? There are two elements greater than or equal to two in the input array. So yes, two is the correct answer. Is the number three, would that work as well? There are two numbers greater than or equal to three. So again, there's a mismatch. Notice that there's only going to be one possible special number. And I kind of just went over a little bit of the intuition of why that is. You might not have caught it. So let me rewind that. Let me replay what I just said. Notice how like we have a range of elements that we're trying. First of all, the solution set has to be in the range one through n, where n is the size of the input array, because there has to be that many elements greater than or equal to whatever element we end up picking, right? So the solution set has to be in this range. We can't have zero because we are given a non-empty array, I believe. Yeah, we're given a non-empty array. So I guess the only way zero would work is if it's an empty array. So we don't have to worry about that. If we tried some arbitrary number X, it doesn't work. Either there's too many numbers, like there are more numbers greater than X, or there are too few numbers greater than X. Suppose there are more numbers, like let's say there's X plus one elements that are actually greater than X. Okay, so then we increment X. Now we try X plus one. Either there's going to be an equal number or there's going to be too few. As we increase X, the number that we're trying, we're basically shortening this range of numbers. We're potentially removing numbers. Okay, but I'm kind of jumping the gun here. This is kind of the intuition for the linear time solution. So let's hold off on this, even though this is quite useful for even solving the solution I'm about to show you right now. The easiest approach to solve this problem is to first consider sorting the array. Because even if you didn't know this fact down here, you don't know that the solution set is in this range. You 100% know that the solution set is going to be either one of the elements in the input array, or it's going to be one of the elements in between. Let me show you why that is. Suppose we're given an input array like this. It might not be sorted when we're given it, but we're going to go ahead and sort it. That's going to take n log n time. That's going to be the bottleneck. So now we're going to think of it like this. We're looking for elements like X, like we want to try X and we want to see how many elements are greater than or equal to X. So let's just brute force this. Now that we've sorted the array, we can kind of brute force this problem. What we're going to first try is we're going to have our pointer over here. Let's call it an I pointer. And we're going to say the total number of elements that are equal to this number or to the right of that number are N, the length of the input. Now, it could be possible that this number itself is equal to the length of the input. Right now, it's obviously not the length is four, this is one. But an example could be four, five, six, seven. In that case, four is obviously the special number. There are four elements greater than or equal to four, so we would return four. In this case, that's not true. Okay, so then we try the next position. We try two. Okay, how many elements are greater than or equal to two? Three elements. So again, there's a mismatch. But it seems like we're kind of getting closer, right? Next, we try this element over here, four. Well, there are two elements greater than or equal to four. Then we're going to try the last one, 
and there's only one element greater than or equal to five. Again, that's a mismatch. So in this example, actually, the answer is negative one because we actually didn't find a special number. But I want to show you that the algorithm that we just did is not complete. Just checking each element is not enough. It could be possible that the solution doesn't actually exist in the input array. It could be in one of the gaps. Suppose I change this input array. Suppose I change it by adding a six over here. Now, if we retry it, you'll again find that this one doesn't work. This one doesn't work. And then we get to four. It also doesn't work. There's three elements greater than or equal to four. But we kind of skipped something, didn't we? We skipped elements in this range. We skipped the three. Three does not exist in the input array, but in this example, three is the correct solution. There are three elements greater than or equal to three. So how do we check that? Well, the really, really brute force way would be to try every number in between these. Sometimes, though, that's going to be very large. Like there could be multiple numbers in this gap. We don't want to necessarily try every single one of them. That would make the time complexity worse than the size of the input. A little shortcut we can take is this. We know at this point there are three elements like to the right here, we're keeping track of how many elements are to the right of our pointer. Our pointer is right over here and there are three elements. So what we want to try is we already know we tried one. We already know we tried two. It didn't work. We already know we tried four as well. We didn't try the number in between here. We know there are three elements. I'm repeating myself a lot. There are three elements here. And why not try that? Let's check is three in between the previous number and the current number. In this case, it is. So that's why we would return three. Let me quickly walk through one last example to really make it 100% clear why this works. I'm going to have one, five, six, seven, eight. Just to kind of get around the edge case, when we start here, we know we don't have a previous element. So instead of checking like the previous index, which could be out of bounds, I'm going to have a separate variable, which I'm going to call previous. I'm initially going to set it to negative one because we know that negative one is never going to exist in this input. So it's a good value to check. Now we're going to see, okay, we're at this pointer. There are five elements greater than or equal to that, but one is not equal to five. Okay. Then we're going to check is five in between the previous number and this number? Nope. Okay. So then we're going to continue. We're going to try the next spot. We're here. There are four elements greater than or equal to five, but that's not equal to five. So that's not the solution. Now we're going to check for the number of elements here. Is that in between the previous number, which uh, we're going to reassign to be one now and the current number? It is. So that's where we found our result. We would return four. This is the solution. This is the n log n solution. You can kind of see it uses very, very similar logic to what I showed earlier, where the solution set we know for sure is going to be in the range of one through n, because we're pretty much trying every single possibility. Here we're trying n, here we're trying n minus one, here we're trying n minus two, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to use this logic to even improve our current solution even more in just a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to start our pointer at zero. I'm going to call previous to initially be negative one for reasons I mentioned earlier. I'm going to set another variable. I'm going to call it total right. We technically don't need this variable. We could compute it like using our I pointer, but I'm just going to use it just to make things a little bit more readable. So initially this is going to be set to the length of nums because we're at the beginning. So the number that's total to the right, including the index is going to be the length of nums, of course. So now I'm going to say while our pointer is in bounds, let's iterate. Let's say if the current number is equal to total right, then we've pretty much found our result, right? So then we can just say return total right, or you could just return the current number. But I'm actually specifically doing this because we know there's another condition. We know that either this is true or total right is in between the current number and the previous number like this. In Python, you can actually do a full like inequality thing like this with both of these operators. So we can check this at the same time. In that case, we would also return total right. OK, I actually just realized that we did forget to sort the input. So let's do that up here. So before we get started with anything, let's make sure we sort the input array. Now, I actually want to mention there is something I forgot to say in the drawing explanation. There is the case where we could have duplicates. For example, let's consider a really, really simple example. Let's say we have four occurrences of the number three. We are relying 
relying on this variable a lot, total right. When we're here, we say there are four numbers greater than or equal to three. Isn't that correct? So obviously this number is three, but there are four numbers greater than or equal to it. So there's a mismatch. But then when we try the second one here, we see there are three numbers greater than or equal to this. And that is equal to three. Our a solution that I kind of showed earlier would return three as the special number. But we know that's not correct because there are actually four numbers greater than or equal to three. In other words, we probably want to stick with the first occurrence of each number. So if we had an array like two, two, and then a bunch of threes, we want to like start here and then we want to go here. We don't want to visit this one. And when we're done with this, we don't want to visit these either because we are relying on like this total right. I guess a better name for it would be like total that are greater than or equal to the number, but that's a very long variable name. So for that reason, instead of doing our solution like the naive way, if we were doing it the way I showed earlier, what we would do is first of all, update previous. So set it to nums of i. We would then increment our i pointer by one and we would uh, update total right by setting it to the length of the input minus i. This just tells us like how many elements are at index i or to the right of it. Just This is just the calculation for it. There's one more step we're going to do before all of this and that is we want to check while nums of i is equal to the next one that's when we want to increment. So in that case, we want to increment this by one. We're always going to increment by at least one. So what this loop is actually doing is given like this array that we were looking at earlier, if we were at three right now, we would say, OK, the next one is the same. So jump over here. OK, next one is the same. So jump over here. Next one is the same. So jump here. So this loop is going to bring us to the last occurrence of a number. If we had a single two, for example, we're just at two, we'd see the next one is three. So let's just stay here. So this loop will take us to the last occurrence of a character and then we'll increment by one more to bring us to the next new number. So that's kind of the logic and reasoning behind this approach. And of course, if we don't find the result down here, let's just go ahead and return negative one. But one thing I guess I did forget is what if i plus one is out of bounds? So in this loop, let's make sure that i plus one doesn't go out of bounds. Let's just check i plus one is less than the length of nums. And this second thing is also true. So now we're done with this. I'll run the code. And as you can see on the left, it works. Well, it's somewhat efficient, but there is a more efficient approach. Let me show you that now. So this sorting based approach implicitly relies on the fact that the solution lies between one through n, where n is the size of the array. Now let's explicitly use that fact to our advantage, and we don't even need to sort the input array. Let me show you what I mean. Let's kind of reverse engineer the solution I just showed you. When we first started at the beginning of the array, we were considering this, like that's how much total right was. So we want to know, is n the solution? Remember our solution set is one through n. We want to ask, is n the solution? How do we know if n is the solution? Well, of course, how many values are greater than or equal to n in the input array? Can't we just go through the input array and literally count how many values are greater than or equal to n? In this case, let's be very concrete. The range is one through five, right? So I'm going to make a little table over here. And for five, I'm going to ask how many values are greater than or equal to five. It looks like there's only two values greater than or equal to five. OK, so now I want to ask, what about four? Four might be the solution. How many values are greater than or equal to four? Well, brute forcing it, that's what we got to do because we don't know how to use our brains. We're going to brute force it. We're going to once again scan through this entire input array. Four five, six. OK, there's three values greater than or equal to four. That's a mismatch, right? OK, let's try three. How many values are greater than or equal to three? One, two, three. OK, there's three values. OK, now we found it. Like this is obviously the solution, right? But I'm just going to keep going because I want you to figure this out yourself. What about two? Let's go through this. Let's iterate over the entire input array. One, two, three, four. OK, so then four here. What about one? One, two, three, four, five, right? You get the idea. Is there a way you tell me to eliminate that repeated work? How come the values are going in increasing order in this direction? Is that a coincidence? It doesn't look like a coincidence to me. It looks to me that the only time 
we need to iterate over the entire thing is to calculate this position. I'm gonna redo what I just showed you the more efficient way. Now I'm gonna say that, okay, let's go over the entire input array, count how many values are greater than or equal to five. We counted two. Now, instead of counting values greater than or equal to four, we already counted the values that are greater than four. We literally did that down here. That's what we did when we counted five or greater. So here we just need to count how many values are equal to four. So we can explicitly loop for that and we'll see, okay, there's just one. And then here we can do the same thing. Loop over the entire thing, count how many values are equal to three. There are zero. But my argument is why do we need to do this, 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 and this in a separate loop? If we're just counting the occurrences of each number, we can do that in a single loop, obviously, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Here we're gonna say, okay, there's a single two. Here there's a single one. So how does this information help us though? Well, it kind of is like a prefix array. I haven't drawn it like that. Sorry, the way I drew it is obviously like top down, but it's kind of like a reverse prefix array. For example, if we wanna know how many values are greater than or equal to five, we get this number here. If we wanna know how many values are greater than or equal to four, we sum up both of these numbers. How many values are greater than or equal to three? We sum up these three numbers. Two, sum up these and for one, sum up these. So now if we can build something like this, we can just iterate over it in reverse order and try every thing. Like basically if we iterate over these orange values in reverse order, we can build these values in linear time. And the way I mentioned it earlier was two loops, right? I said we can do it with two loops, one loop to compute how many values are greater than or equal to five and another loop to compute of the counts of each of these numbers. But there is a way to obviously condense that into a single loop because what we can say is anytime we see a number that is greater than or equal to five, put the count here. Anytime we see a number that's less than five, then just count that number explicitly, like count threes, count twos, count ones. But for the largest number, which is gonna be N in our case, just check any number that is greater than or equal to that number and then count it here. So obviously this is a linear time solution and linear space solution. So let's code it up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is basically what I showed earlier, instead of using like a map, I'm just gonna use a one dimensional array. It's gonna initially just be called count. It's gonna be of length, length of nums plus one because uh, like I showed, we're not gonna use the zero index. We're gonna use indexes from one through N or from one through the length of nums. Those are the indexes that we actually care about. So now's the portion where we're gonna do the counting. For N in nums, let's say we want to ultimately count. We want to count N, right? We wanna say count of this number plus one, but we know there is a particular case if n is greater than or equal to the length of nums, then we're gonna get an out of bounds index error. So in that case, we just want to go to the largest index. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna call this actually index. And here, I'm gonna have a little if statement, a little ternary operator. Index is equal to n if n is less than the length of the input. Otherwise, it's gonna be equal to the length of nums because we don't want it to overflow and any number that is greater than or equal to the length of nums is gonna go in the last index. If you wanna condense this, you can actually, I think, just set this to minimum of n as well as length of nums. I'm pretty sure this is doing the exact same thing. So I'll leave it as is though, just to be a bit more explicit. But now let's do the same thing. I'm gonna use the same variable name. I'm gonna call it total right, but maybe there's a better name for it. And then I'm gonna iterate over this array in reverse order. So I'm going to say for I in range, we want to go in reverse. So I'm going to say from length of nums minus one and then do this in reverse order. So this is the way to do it in Python. Like this is basically going from index length of nums all the way down to zero. People don't really like this way of writing it though for some reason. People complain whenever I do it this way. So we will do it a little bit more readable. This is the equivalent in Python. We can reverse this range just like this. So even though this is length plus plus one, we're actually starting at the length and we're going down until zero, I think. Now we're gonna do what I said earlier. We're gonna aggregate how many we have and we're gonna basically just get the count of index i and then add that to total, right? So this should be renamed that. 
we're going to check is there a mismatch or is there like a match is i equal to total right because if they're both equal the index of like that count as well as the count itself are they equal then we can return the value either total right or i if there's not then we would continue and if we never found the result down here we would return negative one and as you can see this solution works as well and i guess this one is definitely more efficient if you're preparing for coding interviews check out neatcode.io thanks for watching and i'll see you soon